What the f is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Internet's gone wild watching movie stars on trial. I think we could harmonize. I don't know why you think I'm bad at harmonizing. Try it. Now that now Try. that we're rolling. Okay. okay. Every time I sing just to myself, Sophia, I hear her little voice in the background trying to harmonize with me, and it's so annoying. It's like I actually can't help it. What's the one Ariana Grande song we always do? Oh, I don't know if it's Dangerous it, Woman. Was it? Wait, can we try it? <laughs> okay, go. You have to start. You're deep. You guys, I'm, I'm high. I'm not good. What's it? Is it falsetto and. Uh, girl, I don't know. Okay, go ahead. You did sing I got it. Class. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm ready. I don't know why you're laughing. Okay. I'm the low one, obviously. Okay. You make, make me feel. Like <laughs> We're trying it. Try it. Try it. You. <laughs> oh, no. Try. We got to do this. We got to do this. This is for. For all the money. I'm gonna pretend that the camera's I'm, gonna, I'm gonna co block, cover my eyes, ready? You, you make, make me feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I just can't look at you when I do it. I you. don't know why God uh, gave me such a bad voice. God gave me a good voice, I just never nurtured it. And I honestly think there are so many days in the shower where I go, there was a career path in this. And I every choked. girl who sings in the shower thinks that maybe they could make it. That I I tell you right now, I think everyone in their life has one thing that they always say, I should just do it. Like I should just do it. It's just something random. Like why not just do it? The singing lessons is something that I've had thought about every single day. I think it's my Roman Empire. Every single day. Well, girl, go do it then. Jesus, that much? Well, I'm. What What's the point of me doing it? Where am I taking it? Fun. See, Fun I can be a point. Well, a hobby. Do it when, no offense, I move out. That's Yo. not nice. Just because it's a, you know, come on. I don't know what it's like to live with a musician or an artist, but it seems like it would just be 24 7. You think she's going to get it like an ego too associated oh, with it? 100%. Oh, 100%. You know, you know, I would be the girlfriend that would whip me out and be like, I also sing a little. All of a sudden, I have oh, a guitar man. and I serenade you. I think we all sing. You can't tell me guys don't think a girl with a beautiful voice is not like a turn on. Oh, 100%. Right. It's I a always had a right? fantasy. One of my exes, yeah. One yeah, of my it's, exes it's did. A flex. It, was, it's it was a It was a nice add-on. Yeah, it was a good add-on. See, I, I always had one of those fantasies where you go to one of those cool, lounge, low-lit bars, and then every Tuesday night they have just like a singer up there, and she's singing like a rendition of an Elvis Presley song and making it all romantic and sexy. I'm like, oh, that would be, I would no, love to do the that. The amount of times I've had this vision of me just somehow at a karaoke bar with a hot guy that I'm like going out with. Hey, what and is that always And there's an open guy. mic, there's a, because clearly I would be. And then they say, and on an open mic, um, anyone, anyone next, I haven't told him I'm a good singer. I go up and I sing like Mamma Mia or one of those. Um, oh, like Give a slow a version of yeah. like, Give us a taste. I've been oh, no. cheated <laughs> by you. No, no, oh no, no, it, oh. no, it, or, or I would sing the song from Greece, like, but now there's no, and then he would watch me and everyone in the audience would just slow clap, standing ovation. He's like, that's my girl. And then my exes would walk in and they're like, what did we do wrong? <laughs> well, too bad that'll we never, ever happen for you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. Oh. As pretty as I look right now, I feel like a pile of dog shit. Mm -hmm. Sophia, um, do you want to explain? Yeah, well, once again, we've been tormented with the all-hating food poisoning. You know what? Okay. Sophia and I were drinking at 3 p.m. Okay, whatever. It was Saturday. And we decided well, first to— first of all, wait, wait. Context, oh. context. It is football season. It's football season. It, USC— Fight on was playing, and I said, "Sissy, we gotta go to a dive bar, watch the game." Yes. And we did. Well, actually, an Aperol, which is an acceptable drink to have. Before now five that I'm thinking about it, the reason this is making so much sense. What I'm going to explain later in the episode. Something very traumatic happened to me, which led me to be like, "Sophia, I need a cocktail this early in the day," which then led to the food poisoning. So if the bad thing never happened to me then perhaps our stomachs would be fine You're right now. You're telling me you and I wouldn't have sat in our apartment at 3 o'clock on a Saturday, beautiful day, and thought to ourselves we should go get an Aperol spritz? Like, no, we haven't done that for the that. last... It's not that. When you drink, you get the drunchies. And for some reason, I said, oh, yeah, a warm 
pork empanada that looks like it's been flash frozen for the last 12 years. Where'd Sounds you get delicious. It from? We went to this restaurant that's next to our apartment that we've gone to before, and it was. Terrible the first Questionable time. Questionable the first time. It was time. so bad. But we thought, let's just give it another shot because there are always people in there. No, we are clearly Sophia, wrong. We were the only customers in the entire restaurant. Sistine, it was five o'clock on a Saturday. No one would be at a restaurant at five o'clock. Actually, that's, that's, not, that's true. not true. That's not true. Yeah. That's not true. Especially a Mexican place. You're like, oh, yes. I'm like, well, it's not. You guys put up a story from there, though, right? Like you were. Yes. Yeah. That it was a looks, close one. That was a close. sad as By the way, oh, that's why yeah. I posted it. It super sad. By the way, Chris oh, saw because he's on my close friends. <laughs> and I posted a really sad clip of the restaurant because it just looked very depressing in there. It's a good place to get a drink last minute really quick. Yes. But that's it. Like, you so don't anyway, go anywhere else for that. We're eating these pork empanadas, which, by the way, they're like, it's fresh. It's this. And that came out in six minutes. There's simply no yeah, way. Yeah, it was a little There's odd. There's no way. It was a little odd. Was it delicious? No. I really S- liked it. Sistine, no, I remember chewing it. Oh, no. And thinking to myself, this is funky. I thought to myself. It was a little gray. It was a little oh! weird. Because <laughs> there were three, there's three options. I'm just wondering, please, this is what, we could have avoided this. You can have the vegetarian one, the chicken, or the pork. We got two chickens and decided to throw in a pork. <laughs> that was the time. We wanted to get a little spunky. <laughs> no, we Let's get a like, pork one. Let's, ew. Let me tell you. God. I have never been so down bad. Oh. I thought it would have passed. It's been like six no, no. days. Sistine and I the next day woke up, and I can't even explain to you the feeling of this. We had pro- earlier in the year had another uh, food yeah. poisoning incident with another very popular restaurant we won't name, but shocking. It went away in a day, like or even a couple hours. Like we we did our thing and it went away. This time, our insides and I can't. This is exactly how to ex- explain it. We're on. Fire. Horrible. The whole day. We were on the couch, like, crying at this point. We couldn't eat anything. Even, by the way, to the point, for two days, this is how we felt, couldn't even have water. We could not drink water. Every time we sipped water, it would be like a flamethrower just ignited in our bellies. It was so bad. Um, And then we slowly started doing, like, the brat diet. We were, like, forcing ourselves to drink water, as painful as it was. And it's been a week, and we're still not fully healed. And I'm very upset. If I don't have a miraculous recovery by tomorrow morning, I will be pissed. Yeah. Because tomorrow we are going to the Jelly Roll concert. I think he is the coolest dude right now. Yeah. I'm a huge Jelly Roll fan, and apparently... It's a fan of mine. That's a stretch. Really? That's, no, that's a stretch. No, he is. That's slightly. a stretch. Basically, I have to explain this because it's so exciting. Yeah. By so, the way, Jelly Roll is a country, kind of, yeah, a country music country. Ar- music artist. We saw him the first time at Stagecoach. Yes. And that's where we kind of got our feels of him in yes. the first place. But he's Continue. just so cool. And the funniest thing about Jelly Roll is I actually became a fan of him through his wife. Because I saw all of these clips of just their relationship and how they met. I just thought they were so fascinating and cool. And so one day I was like, you guys, we got to watch the Jelly Roll documentary. I sat my whole family down and every single person was like, whoa, this guy's amazing. He's got a documentary already? Yes. And no one knows about it. It's really good. It brought us all to tears. It's such a good documentary. He's had such a crazy tough upbringing. Like Mm -hmm. in jail, no one like raising him. He had kids. Drugs, this, it's unbelievable. And he just had this random passion. He's basically homeless, had this passion for singing out of nowhere. Bunny came in, his wife, when he was at rock bottom. Which like, is the coolest part. Yeah, like, like she, she was, was truly not, just there for him. Yeah, he had not, he hadn't even like attained fame yet. Yeah. And she st- was just there to be there with him. Yes. And it just like snowballed because of how I think he has so much soul from how many. Things he went through. And he's very up- relatable to a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. And his music is just, his words so are so good. So, anyway, I thought, hey, Sly, he would be really good in Tulsa King. He is like the perfect kind of character that my dad loves to cast. It's just these people that wouldn't expect someone like Jelly Roll to be acting. And I, I just felt like that is the perfect first role for him to do. Yeah. That would be so major. So, through a connection of mine, had a connection to Jelly Roll. I linked them up. He appeared on last Sunday's episode of Tulsa King. Mm-hmm. It worked out. It was full circle. Here's what blew my goddamn mind. Okay. There were three things that happened that blew my mind. Okay. Maybe this is one of them. I am walking down the street, minding my business, shopping. All right. 
all of a sudden I get a phone call from an unknown number, a FaceTime. And first thought in my head was, okay, it's probably a guy that I gave my number to at a bar. Yeah. So I was like, okay, you know what, I'll answer it. Whose face comes up on my phone? Jelly roll. Mm. Yeah. I lost, I threw my phone across, I lost <laughs> my Mind. It was the craziest thing it ever. It was so cool. Unfortunately, the call disconnected after a few minutes. And then he texted me a personal video message. Okay? Yeah. Then it gets better. Then he gives me a shout out in an article and said I was his friend. Yeah, I just came out like last week saying like I give my credit for my appearance to Sistine Stallone. It was so- no, let me read so, it. He's like the yeah. nicest person this. ever. Um, and also a third thing that was crazy is that he had his team reach out to us and set up um, tickets so that we can go backstage and go to the concert tomorrow. Justine, if you don't ask that question that I texted you about the he other day, wants you need us to, to get jelly on the pod. You gotta get jelly on the pod. There, he, I didn't know you casted him in the show. Uh, besides, well, I didn't cast him, but it was like truly you know, on me. Come on, decide. This you, is what he said. You're so this modest. We need to start. I know she really. <laughs> this is what he said about me. He said he is <laughs> thankful for Justine's friendship, who made the initial connection. Quote, I owe Sistine forever for getting me to be a part of my favorite show, says Jelly Roll. I know. Oh, he's friend. in your I debt. <laughs> look at how, look at like Jelly Roll would fit perfectly right, right in the here. middle there. He's I know, so you know, honestly, there are times like these where having a guest back on is really appealing to he me. He would be yeah. probably like, I think like, we should start doing this again. pick better guests. I know, you yeah. know, I think what we can do, yeah. honestly, and actually listeners, like let us know if you would be open to us starting to sprinkle in some guests. Cause I have been thinking about it. I think it'd be really cool to still do our solo episodes cause I love our solo episodes. But if we had like him No, that's come major, on, that's major. I would be 100% I mean, open to doing that. I, that's I'm gonna wish for that on my Christmas list. I don't think he's you're so busy. You're out of your mind. I'll try. Listen, well, we but can you have to be kind of quick about it because he's he's here on now. tour right now. Yeah, yeah, but isn't he? So oh, how long he wouldn't he? do it this weekend. He's on tour. He he's, might. I actually know his schedule, which he is kind of crazy. But hit him but up. But Sophia I and I got invited to his show, mm -hmm. and then we got invited to the after party. <laughs> Not sure what's gonna happen there, Here's but the I'm thing. excited. <laughs> I gotta figure out an aesthetic. Because Bunny dresses like this badass rocker. Oh, chick. I was just gonna be very normal. I, I no, just, see, I want to fit I in. I need to see what you look like. Online. Well, no, the reason why I'm saying that is because I feel like whenever you're a guest of and there's like wives and kids, I never want to be like too much. Like honestly, the makeup I have on no, now I is gonna be the makeup that, I'm wearing. But it's I'm kind not of gonna, fun. It's like dress up. No, I'll dress up. But, like I'll wear jeans and like a like a black top and boots. Like I'm not gonna. Yeah, this was funny. exactly what I pictured. Right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, She's so epic. dope. She literally, fa they found each other when he had zero career. Yeah. And you know what I always say? It's so cool that I, they just Every time together. I see her, I'm always, in my brain, I always think, I'm like, I would love to call her and ask her for boy advice. Because oh, I feel like she would whip me into shape. No. I feel like she would get it. I She'd feel like amazing. she would just be like, punch him. She would literally, <laughs> yeah. No, she'd be like, dump him. You're being dumb. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And I, I honestly need to hear that from Bunny. I would respect it enough to hear that from her. I know. I know. So that's really exciting. No, we're so excited. And also exciting that we have fall here, finally. But, you know, you guys, it's 77 in New York right now. And we are only wearing hoodies and sweaters just to force the fall aesthetic. Even Chris joined in. I love fall in New York. But riddle me this. What is up with women loving everything pumpkin flavored. You tell me. No, like candles. What are you talking about? I love everything the pumpkin flavored. The drinks, flavor. not for me. Because it's nostalgic. Of it's, what? Because it's a, we didn't grow it's a up sweet eating drink. Pumpkin. It's, a spe it's a specialty. Like you don't get, having a pumpkin drink in June is so weird. Like having pumpkin pie in October is amazing. Or for Thanksgiving, because think about it. Pumpkin reminds you of Thanksgiving. It I reminds you of Gilmore Girls. That is such a crazy. Hate Thanksgiving. She hates Thanksgiving. Well, I got food poisoning. No, oh no, stomach God. flu one year. No, she's annoying about it. Thanksgiving <laughs> is by far second. I'm the Grinch. I'm, I'm like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving is so good when it's done right. The last few years we have shitty Thanksgivings because it's like we haven't cooked anything. We've been going to restaurants and We're that sucks. Lazy, yeah. We've been lazy, but pumpkin flavor just reminds me. I'm like, oh, spooky season's almost here. No, this is. I don't know if this is an ick. But a dude texted me this recently and said, oh, I found a place that is making pumpkin flavored espresso martinis. We should go. Yum. Sistine, that is a great thing. Why? 
That's delicious punk. because it's a part of the aesthetic, the mood. It sets the tone, the vibe. Like it's fall season. <laughs> it's boots. She, she said it's boots. It's boots. It's sweaters. It's cozy. It you should set him up with Sophia. I know. Well, well, that, hey. that can't happen. Well, um, oh. that well, would be a little but that, overlap. I honestly think you should. I don't know. I love it. I'm so excited because that means we get to watch Harry Potter. For that the next I'm excited month. for. That I'm excited for. Yeah, that's for. what I'm saying. And we can have pumpkin spice lattes along with it. See, I'm actually down to go to a Target with you and just load up the entire apartment with pumpkin everything. I'm excited for that. I would love I'll to do, do that it. With you. I'll, did, I'll try did that to just learn. Happen? Did huh? she convert you to pumpkin? No, I just feel like I'm such an asshole. I, I'm so down on <laughs> everything. That. I should probably learn to embrace it. It's embrace things. it. It's, it's like the oh wait, Fine. it's the equivalent of smelling pine cones during Christmas time. Oh, you know what that reminds you know? me of? Do you remember the smell of fresh snow? Disneyland, the ride, um, the haunted house oh, ride. Oh. Remember the haunted house ride in Disneyland? Yeah. You walk through one scene and it had that smell of it smelled like French toast and pine cones and cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. That reminds me. I of know. Fall. You can't. And then hearing the, the theme mansion. song. I'm fall is my favorite time of year. Yeah. I don't care about summer. Summer, summer can happen for a month and I'm over it. I mean, fall, well, fall is fall is, it. is just romantic. There's it's something romantic. about. I guess New York is in on the lore because even just the lighting during fall in the city is just moody and romantic. I just want to be in a relationship, cuddle on yeah. the couch, just be cozy. Honestly, also. Movies hit different in the fall. 100%. Hit different. You can't tell me when Harry meets Sally, that one hits. Yeah. Halloween Town. It's funny, though. Since the temperature has dropped like 10 degrees, am I wrong? All the couples are out. Yeah. Every time we walk down the street, there's 50 dates in one street. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Wait, do you want... (laughs) This happened last night. What? Remember how this happened last night? We're watching the movie It Ends With Us last night. Oh, girl. I am I'm I'm in the time of the month where everything is making me very emotional. She's luteal. I'm luteal right now. We're educated on that. Let me just explain to you how bad this is. And this is like triggering my emotions. The movie, the wardrobe is just um that's inexcusable. Clownish, I'm sorry. It's just it's inexcusable. so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Like men dress it's, great. Listen, I mean, I'm sorry. The, the wardrobe character. in the film, I get what they were trying to do directionally. It almost felt like they were trying to set a trend or follow a trend. That is not a trend that anyone wants to follow. It's just not good. Riddle me this, why? Balloon Ronald McDonald pants are tucked into combat boots with a Tommy Bahama shirt. And? What, what, uh, uh, Oh, and the freaking cameo jacket. Cameo jacket, yeah. Wait, she was, there's a scene, there's a moment. So I'll get back to my luteal face in a second. There's <laughs> I'll a get scene. Back to my period. I, and I could not, I could not wrap my head. There's a scene. This is supposed to be her scene where she sees the guy and she's supposed to look hot, step right? Out, yeah. Step out, step in. Like this is the pivotal moment. Yep. She walks in to this room mm. and everyone's dressed to the nines. It's a neat, it's a, it's, they're in Boston or something in Chicago. It's like Chicago. Whatever. Yeah. Everyone's chic as shit. She walks in mm. underneath her Jacket is this little black dress. It's okay. With an oversized cameo jacket that you should wear. Wait, pause. Camo? Camo. Is it cameo? Cameo. You keep saying cameo. Like oh, the, sorry. The, is that a different? Oh, I thought it was. <laughs> oh, cameo. Duh. No. Camo. I know, but cameo is like doing a cameo. I know, I know. <laughs> you said like a video. Times. I didn't want to correct you, but keep going. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> camo. Oh my God. I didn't even realize I was cameo. doing that. Cameo. 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 Tomato, tomato. I know what the difference is. Please don't think I'm stupid. Um, mm-hmm. She walks in with a camo jacket and stockings that uh, you would wear on Halloween. Mm-mm. And what was it? Also? It was like a gold gown. It was, no, that was another one that we freaked out uh. over. This one was a black one. I, and she, mm. Sounds kind of hot, to be honest. No, it wasn't. Are you okay? It was a puffer kind of... camo jacket. What's wrong with Down, men? Down to his knees. No, are you... J- no, she. Uh, See, this is what. Okay, I, this just you actually. <laughs> this, you looked it up. This just Can actually. I look it up? Tr- yeah. yeah, look it up. What do I even look search? Up, to I actually, it this. ends with us, outfits, something like that. Cameo. This Cameo. Actually, I did it again. No, <laughs> I, can't do I this. have something to say. This just shows what women think is attractive and what men think is attractive. When a girl did you any see, guy think that was hot except Chris just no, saying no? I guarantee a lot of guys do. There's there. I'm I'm seeing the camo jacket. Yeah, it, it did this, an appearance 15 trillion times. Is it this? 
It's that yeah. jacket, but think about that jacket over a little black dress. Not even a little black dress. Do so you still think it's hot, Chris? Um, I like the jacket a lot, first of all. I'm <laughs> Whatever. A, I'm I a big sucker can't. for cameo. No. Cameo! <laughs> <laughs> that was on purpose, no, though. That was on purpose, I know. <laughs> this is what Thank actually you. boggles my mind. Whenever you see a woman dressed super chic, super Pinterest-like, like really put together, coordinated, super cool. Yeah. She's dressing for women because men don't appreciate how hard it is to put an outfit like that together. But when you slap some shit on and it doesn't make sense, that's what guys well, think no, is cool. guys don't <sighs> care about what you really... W- no. I don't think so. I care. Well, I that care is, a lot. That is no, so guys, some guys, together. Some, no, some guys do actually care about fashion. Like, it depends on their okay. fashion. But um, to Correct go back me. to the point of why I brought this up. Oh, yes. Fall season... Emotional couples are out. Literally, the guy just says to her, I love you. Oh, yeah. He just said, I love you. It was in the middle of the movie. Not even the pivotal point. He just says, I love you. And I look over at her. Tears. And she's sniffling. And, and I, go, I go, what is wrong with you? I go, I just want someone to say that to me. She goes, I just miss no one said that to me. So I want to oh, say I love you. I haven't heard that in a year. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's not even that long. <laughs> it hasn't been that. Honestly, by the way, there's been not one point in this like last year and a half that I've had that thought going like, oh no. yeah. No, it just popped up. But anyways, so the season's giving me all the feels, but. You guys are about to have a lot of people telling you they love you. After this oh, I know, I know. That movie was really interesting because it just shows the complexities of like a relationship and I won't get into break down the film and all but every time Sophia and I watch something that has to do with anything relationship type we get very heated about what we find wrong with our generation of dating and relationships I mean we got into a we paused the movie for maybe 45 minutes and just ranted and screamed and just was so angry but I will say just to make sure that people because I also we need to say this and I want to say this um, they did an incredible job talking about SA. Justin Baldoni he, is so no, he's good not, he's in amazing. This. I mean, I've been seeing him advocating for people to step up and protect themselves. It's no, just, he's amazing. But it, it's a hard it's a hard thing to do. Is first off, be the guy that does it, and then also Direct. portray it in a way that's empowering, that's sensitive. That's it's just yeah, yeah. See that that is a really hard task. Yeah, because you could easily offend someone. And he did such a beautiful job, in my opinion, portraying that. Yeah. And, like, it, being an advocate and a voice. Yes. Oh, also, yeah, trigger warning. If you watch this movie, there is SA. And it, the book is based on that. And so I will say they did a great job of being able to handle such a sensitive topic on 100%. screen. I want to pivot topics because do you guys remember when something bad happened to me and the guy a couple weeks ago? Well, your next victim right here. You got a new one over here. Thank you. Yep. I thought there'd be a little more time in between the two. And I'm only saying this because I feel like I gave Sophia, sorry, babe, a lot of shit for that situation. And it's really easy to be angry as a family member or even a friend that's like, why would you put yourself in that scenario? Why would you wear that? Why would you this? Why would you Mm -hmm. that? When truly it's not the person's fault at all. But you're just so angry and overprotective that you're angry that the situation even happened to the person that you care about. Can I just say that that is very healing for you to say that? Because I haven't heard anyone say that in our family to me about what happened. And I appreciate you saying that. Well, yeah, I love you. And I always thought that. I think a lot of these things about you, not even in context of this, but I don't ever have the urge to say it. Sometimes when I think I think it, that's enough. Like you will understand that. But sometimes people need to hear it. Yeah. Oh, I needed yeah, to hear I that. I need to be better with because, that. Because, I mean, like, with you'll explain your situation, but there, the reason the, why I behaved the way I did. You should give a little context. Of what happened with me? Yeah. So oh, know. yeah. So a few weeks ago, if you haven't heard and you're new to this, um, I was in a library, just headphones in. This guy comes up to me, totally normal situation. I shake his hand. Shouldn't have done in the first place, but he, I just, I'm a friendly person. And that's the first problem. <laughs> And uh, let's say, long story short, he kisses me on the neck, shoulder, um, and then runs out. And apparently he does this to a lot of women. So he basically, as, like, assaulted me and touched me without... He didn't basically. He did. He did. Yeah. Um, and I got a very interesting take from family and f- 
family a little bit just because I understand that like their first and foremost thing is like react in a we're a very protective way but it's it's hard to also put yourself in that situation until you're in it so yeah and the thing with mine is I was walking in the meatpacking district which I frequently walk a lot and sometimes I think when you do a path in New York quite often you're like I know this path this path is safe I I mean I could do it with my eyes closed Mm -hmm. you don't feel dangerous in the familiar place. So this was on, I think it was Saturday. Yeah. For some reason, meatpacking was having some sort of carnival festival thing going on. There's a huge crowds of people everywhere. Anyway, so I'm walking through meatpacking and I call Sophia. Sophia, you should come out and meet me. It's beautiful. We should walk around. Mm-hmm. And she said, okay. So I start walking towards her and there was this guy on a bike And I had my headphones in, but there's a guy on a bike who just started screaming like really inappropriate profanities at me and calling me this and cat calling me. But I just kept moving. I didn't even acknowledge it. I was like, I'm just going to pretend that they're not there. Mm -hmm. And he comes up behind me. I thought I had lost him. He comes up behind me on his bike and puts his hands on me. And that's when I freaked out. And then he started screaming at me, accusing me of being bad words, which I'm not going to repeat right now. And just getting right in my face. The scariest part was I was probably around 50 people and like no one did anything. And I get in that situation. By standard effect. Yeah. Like you wouldn't want to involve yourself. And I totally understand that. But that was kind of crazy as well. To see that. To feel like alone, even though I was in a huge crowd of people. And so when he just kept going and screaming and screaming, um, I just start sprinting. Like I just take off as fast as I can go and I'm running straight through this crowd because I was like, that's going to be my best bet. I can lose him. Like there's so many people out. It was like packed like cattle. And so I'm running through the crowd and then I turn around thinking I lost him. I'm already a block sprinting and he is cutting through the crowd on his bike and everyone's like, whoa, running out of the way. And I'm thinking, holy shit. Like I'm still running. I'm three blocks later, still running for my life. I run into oncoming traffic and I run into the Sephora there. And I said, okay, this is stupid, but I know the Sephora quite well. I frequent there very often. So I know the store. I know that there's a lot of walls in which I can like duck and hide behind. And there's a lot of employees. So I just sprint in there and I'm hiding behind a makeup counter. And I just peek it out the window. And I think that I lost him. And one of the employees came up to me and was like, are you okay? And honestly, I looked very suspicious. Like I was panting and hiding and they were probably thinking I was stealing or something. And I was like, yeah, there's, um, I'm, I'm just being chased and I'm wanting to wait for a second. She goes, I will call someone if you need, do not move, stay here. Like I'll watch out for you. Right. Mm-hmm. So I go to the back of the store and I peek up over the makeup counter wall and I see he's inside the store and he's screaming at the top of his lungs you can't hide from me, bitch. I will find you. I will get you screaming. And at this point he has five employees like trying Mm -hmm. to box him out of the store and I'm freaking out. Now I call Sophia and I just say, do not come find me. Do not come find me. The first thought that I had was, I don't want her anywhere near where this person is because then he might hurt her or like do something. So I was like, do not come. And Sophia did the opposite. She booked it. I booked it. Booked it so fast right towards me. And I was like, no, you're I booked it with my pepper spray in hand. Everyone thought I was crazy as I'm running like this. And she gave me the description and I walk around and I'm like, once I get to the actual place, I'm patrolling outside the Sephora. And by the way, in the middle of all of this, I'm hiding in the back of the store. And he was probably in there for five minutes before they actually had to call the police to get him out. For 15 minutes, I am on the ground, like in a bug formation, just like shaking. Like if he comes back here, I'm screwed. Like I'm literally screwed because these people, they're just like Sephora workers. Like they they can't, they don't have the means to protect you right Mm -hmm. now. I peek up about like five minutes after I get off the phone with her and I see four cops take him into the back of the store and we just booked it. Yeah, I go back inside and I run out with her. Terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. See? And then I drank and then I got food poisoning that day. It was a very bad day for me. Not good. I'm telling you, it's it always happens when you least expect it. And you and you really do try everything you can to like avoid it and it just happens to you. Even if when you're trying to get away and I'm sorry that happened to you. It's I'm sorry too, but I'm I'm really hoping that this like reaches all females because the saddest thing is it's like we go on our TikTok, for example, and we see videos every day of New York girls mm-hmm. that 
it, they have like maybe 400 likes on the video of them saying, oh, they got assaulted on the West Side Highway. Oh, they got groped in this street. Oh, they got hit on that street. I mean, it like is headbutt. Yeah. constant. Don't have your headphones in. Don't be looking down. Headphones. Headphones. Yeah. headphones. I tell like every girl. Hundred, and you know what was so weird too? So I had the men when he first came up to me. And then when I started walking away thinking that he had left, I was about to put it back in. And for some reason, I was like, I, I have a feeling he's going to come. Like, I just had this, like, instinct. Like, I you like, need, to, I be need to keep it out. Some people think that, like, if you have headphones in, people aren't going to bother you. Yeah. And you're more likely to be able totally. to, like, kind of just ignore it. And, like, I, w- I will say that usually if you just ignore something, it kind of works. But it's for that situation where it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to not obstruct your senses so that 100%. you can avoid sh- stuff like that as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Happens. I mean, it's scary out there. It's scary. And even if you're not in New York, everywhere, just be wary of your surroundings. Especially Try, in New York, though. Yeah, yeah especially. New York is bad. New York it's is getting, getting, it's getting I bad. I feel like it's getting worse. I, or either either this our social media and girls on it are being a lot more vocal about what happens to them, and now we're getting a lot more stories and accounts that are occurring, or it's just getting more yeah. chaotic. And I do feel like a lot of people are more violent today. I 100%. just feel, I don't know. There's just some, something weird in the air around here. And you have to just be very, 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 very careful. But I'm sorry. I know I was. I was I'm really sorry that happened to you too. Yeah. Thanks, guys. guys I said this is a scene. I said if he came up, because we were when we were walking back to the apartment, I was like, if he came back up, this is like what the mentality you should just have in general. I said if he came back, I would literally go absolutely feral, scream as loud as I can, like almost scare him a little bit, like yeah. act like a rabid dog. Like I don't even care if everyone around me pulls out their phones. Like the, the, you should have that fight or flight when you're on like those busy streets and they're, uh, you don't know your surroundings. Yeah. And, and I, I also think like going into a store is your best bet. And I have to say shout out to the Sephora worker. If by some miracle you're watching this, she actually helped me so much. Like, everyone else was, all the other employees were kind of looking at me like, what is she doing? They were all walkie-talking because it looked like I was being suspicious. But she's the one that called help. Even when I said, no, it's I'm, I'm fine, she called help. She got him taken care of. So, yeah, there was a bunch of cop cars for help. There. Ask yeah, for ask, help. Run into a store. Run into, like, a nice store. Usually there's always a security guard yeah. at nice stores, you know? Also, also, hmm. If you are getting harassed by someone on the street... Don't feel like you owe them an explanation. Don't feel like you owe them a conversation. Mm-hmm. You don't owe them anything. Because sometimes I feel like the longer that you linger with them, the worse it's going to get for you to get out of that situation. And I just always think the worst. Like, you never know what they have strapped on them. You don't know if they have no. a weapon on them. So just be safe out there. Be safe. Love you. Mm-hmm. I'm sweating after that. I'm having PTSD. I know. I know. I'm talking sweating. about it again. Let's do a listener question. I yeah. can't. Oh my God. Okay, we're going to do an unsolicited advice. This person wrote in Hi, Sistine and Sophia. I wanted to tell you both that I love listening to the podcast and I love listening to you guys talk about all the subjects and unsolicited advice that you guys give. You have inspired me and have been impacted my life in so many ways. That's sweet. That's really nice. Thank you for being a part of my life. This is new for me asking for advice on this podcast, but I am turning 26 years old this November. Hey, girl, 26 club. And I'm wondering if you both have any tips, advice, guidance for me on what I should be focusing on in life at this age. I have been single for about six years now. I have had relationships in the past, but they have never worked out because I care very easily and I've gotten taken advantage of. I'm really looking for guidance. I love you guys. Well, happy Ooh, birthday. Wow. I like this question. It's different. Advice and guidance that I feel like I wish I heard more of was you're just 26. You're not 46. You're not 56. Live in being 26 years old. Life is about to get hard. And I feel like we only have a few more years where you can just go for it, be free, care less, live more. That's my advice. Like in terms of dating, don't put pressure on it. In terms of finding the perfect job, don't put pressure on it because everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to. Yeah. And I think one of the most beautiful things of being in your mid 20s, like I'm I'm not that like I'm 20, I'm not like crazy older than you. But one thing that I wish I focused on more was 
Yeah, not putting so much pressure on myself mm-hmm. and really enjoying my life. And I know this is one thing I can't stand when people say all the time is, oh, it'll, it'll, you'll find the guy when it works for you or just, just focus on your self-growth. There is a truth in that. I really think it's important to really go after the things that you really want to try. Like, please go to those classes, go mm-hmm. to those games, go to go become the person you want. Put yourself out there. Put yourself out there. With friendships, with dating, like just go for it. Mm -hmm. Rejection doesn't exist, I feel like, for us at this age, truly. And I think it's a beautiful thing that you feel so easily. And I think you just be wary about people abusing that. I think you be Mm -hmm. very picky about the people that you lend to your life. I think it's really important to start building a community around you. Because I will say, as you get older, one thing that I realized from being 26 when I just moved to the city, I was 26 when I moved to New York, and now I'm 28. My circle has gone significantly smaller. Mm -hmm. The type of guys that I've dated then are not the guys I would date now. The career choice I had back then is somewhat similar, but there's a lot of new things I'm doing. You have no idea how much of a shift life happens every single year. So just in this moment, do what you feel is right for you. Do not let people take advantage of you. Friendships as well. Friendships especially. Find and hone in on those really, really good ones. Do not be the person that needs to feel like you have to put your hand in every single pocket. Mm-hmm. Like just focus on the people that nurture you, that grow you, the men that grow you, the family that nurtures you. I have a good quote for this oh. that I want to say. When you are looking for what you lack, you lose what you have. But when you enjoy what you have, you get what you lack. Ooh, mm-hmm. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I think what makes quotes so beautiful is they explain the unexplainable things in life. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it gives something a definition. I'm I'm someone that needs to hear advice. I'm someone that needs to hear a quote and, you know, enjoy the things. Read that again. When you are looking for what you lack, you lose what you have. But when you enjoy what you have, you get what you lack. Mm-hmm. Oh. And the last thing I want to say about this is um, you mentioned that you've had relationships, but they don't work out because you care easily and get taken advantage of. I was just having a conversation with my girlfriend who recently got out of a relationship and she was severely taken advantage of because her kindness was used against her. And I told her, I said, your kindness is your greatest strength. And if someone has the ability to twist that and make it a bad thing on you, Mm -hmm. don't ever lose that part of yourself. That is your superpower. Like, don't ever change. The fact that you care a lot should not be a weapon against you or anyone else. Like, Mm -hmm. that is a beautiful trait. Don't lose that. You're just meeting the wrong people. Oh, also one more point that I, surface level point. I think this is a really good, if you don't have it, find your style. Find your expression. No, but really, I think it took me forever. And I'm still learning to actually find my, my, how I express myself through clothing and makeup. grandma. Thank you, Sistine. Uh, and I'm, I think it's really important to learn that now so that the next few years you just like have this expression of yourself and you feel more comfortable in the body you're in. Um, also, talk to older people. Yeah. I will say that. Find mentors. Old people rock. I think it's really important in our 20s because, oh, this is, I think, a huge thing. <laughs> I think it's, I feel like there's this very me ideology. I think a lot of people talk, 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 and they give so much advice. And look, at this is what we do for a living. We, we chat for a living. But I think it's really important sometimes just to listen. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really important to listen and learn from people that you respect that are older mm-hmm. and truly take in that advice because sometimes we forget that these people have lived an extra 20 years. Yes. You know, they've gone through probably divorces, children, job changes, heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And I think that some of the greatest lessons I've learned was from learning and watching people that were older than me. And surrounding yourself with people that are Mm like-minded, morally aligned with you. Yeah. I mean, we could keep going on forever, but I think we have to wrap it up. Okay. Well, we love you guys and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye.